Hey everyone, welcome back to the Pseudo Sage channel. Today I want to discuss something that is very important and ties into all of our lives and that has to do with our programming that we receive as a child that may not help us or be empowering for us as we move into adulthood. Now, just jumping right into the topic, I like to think of our mind as a computer. We have the hardware, the basic operating system that runs our minds, and then we have the software that is installed into our minds through our environment, through our programming. Our parents are the main culprit of instilling certain programs within us. And when we go to school, our classmates and our teachers and everyone that we come in contact with plays a pivotal role in determining who we become and how we see ourselves in the world. Um, there can be many different types of programming that we receive. They can be empowering programming, such as seeing yourself as someone who is capable of achieving things, someone who's successful, someone who's creative or confident or happy. And if we continuously think these things about ourselves through repetition, we start to believe it and that belief becomes a part of our reality. Now, if in childhood we are told negative things about ourselves, such as we're a failure, or we're not good enough, either indirectly or directly by the people around us, the way they treat us, the, the things that they say to us. And even through model behavior, we begin to create a narrative and a story about who we are. And these programs are installed into our hardware system and they run like a software. And so we can't necessarily choose what software and what programs to run because it's already instilled in us as a child. But we can, um, as we get older, choose which programs that we want to delete and which ones that we want to continue to run. This reminds me of a quote by Sam Owens, who says, our brains are like computers. It is our responsibility to program them well, daily, and remove the viruses. So viruses can signify or be symbolic of the negative negativity that we receive as children, the disempowering thoughts, the things that our parents were struggling with themselves, their insecurities and their struggles. And then we adapt them and we download them into our system and think that that's reality. And it's almost like these things play on loop. We're exposed to it every single day. And it almost puts us in almost like a self-induced hypnosis where we automatically just think that that is the truth of reality. And we don't question it because we're children. We don't know to question it. We think that it's absolute fact. And then eventually 95% of who we are is actually subconscious. So between the ages of zero and 14, we are highly malleable and easily susceptible to whatever programs are coming to us from our environment. And I also wanna share this quote from Joe Dispenza, who's someone who studies this topic very thoroughly and very deeply. And I actually love reading his work because it's so profound and so eye-opening to make you realize how much of our reality is determined by our thoughts, our emotions, our beliefs, the thoughts that we think repetitively. And so I just wanna read a quote from him that I love. Your thoughts and feelings come from your past memories. If you think and feel a certain way, you begin to create an attitude. An attitude is a cycle of short-term thoughts and feelings experienced over and over again. Attitudes are shortened states of being. If you string a series of attitudes together, you create a belief. Beliefs are more elongated states of being and tend to become subconscious. When you add beliefs together, you create a perception. Your perceptions have everything to do with the choices you make, the behaviors you exhibit, the relationships you choose, and the realities you create. We are vehicles of consciousness, experiencing source through different perspectives. And these perspectives become our perception. And based upon what perception is dominantly leading you in the moment, it's going to determine the world that you live in and what version of source you're experiencing in that moment. And so when you're a child, you're a blank slate. You are pure, unfiltered, unadulterated source as a child. And through the perception of the people around us, they install different ideas, different thoughts, different beliefs, different feelings in us that we go on to think repetitively and condition ourselves to think a certain way and see the world a certain way. And we take that same attitude into adulthood. Now, the thing why some people struggle so much is because they haven't examined a lot of these beliefs and thoughts that they are carrying around with them that were created somewhere in childhood and have created some type of faulty wiring, some type of virus that is sabotaging their growth and development as a person. And so to live in a more expansive form, to live in a more empowered state, 
is to go through and selectively choose which programs you are running to selectively think about, is this helpful? Is this productive? Is this even true? Um, some of the things that we're taught as children are not even true or they're very limited, shallow ways of viewing reality, such as what's possible. There is a notion in life that there's a path that you're supposed to follow. You're supposed to go to school, um, K through 12, then you go to college, you get your degree, and then you go get a nine to five that you work for 40 plus years and you retire until you're 65 and you can live off of your you know, social security or whatever it is that you receive. And that's just the way you do it. But it's not actually true because you see very many people who are able to live beyond that and create exceptional lives for themselves. But in order to do that, they had to have a different idea of what's possible. And it's about opening up your limited perspective of what life is supposed to be. And it takes a lot of consciousness and a lot of awareness to really get down to the bottom of it and break it down because a lot of the th these things are subconscious and we don't even realize that we're thinking them. Here's a quote by Earl Nightingale. Whatever we plant in our subconscious mind and nourish with repetition and emotion will one day become a reality. So what are the programs that you're running around money? What did you witness as a child? how the people around you related to money. Was there never enough? Was there a scarcity mindset? Or maybe they had more of an abundance mindset. What were their attitudes about relationships and men and women? And which ones are you regurgitating and playing out today that may or, ne that may, or may not be helpful to you achieving what you're desiring to achieve in your relationships? And then also what type of mindset? The mindset about what you're capable of and who you are. I know one thing that we are kind of turned away from is failure. And something that I've learned around my life is that failure is actually a beautiful and wonderful thing that you should welcome more of in your life. But if you're taught that if you fail, that automatically means you're a fuck up or you messed up, you're less likely to take more risks and to think creatively, and to think creatively and think outside of the box. And you're going to be very limited in what you see as being possible for yourself because you're afraid of that failure. You're afraid of the judgment. You're afraid of the social stigmas associated with it. But the more you fail, the closer you get to actually achieving what it is that you desire. And failure can teach you so much about what works and what doesn't work. Um, so if you think that you are fixed, who you are is fixed, you think that you are a certain way and that you'll always be a certain way, um, the way that you show up in the world, you think your past defines who you are, you're going to be limited in that. You have to see yourself as more. You have to see yourself and your ability to change because we all have the ability to change and to install new narratives and new programs within us. And we can do this consciously to create a more desirable and intentional life for ourselves where we are empowered and we live in abundance and we can create happiness and love around us but we have to realize that it starts within us first our environment does not dictate how we feel how we feel dictates our environment and so sitting in that driver's seat and taking control over your life and rewriting those past narratives from childhood is so essential in this journey to living a greater life living more expansively and achieving all the things that you've wanted for yourself so yeah, I just wanted to touch on the subject. If you have anything to add, please share down in the comments below. I also want to share a new Facebook group that I have where we can all come together and connect with each other on this journey, whether it is we want to share some insider wisdom or we need some encouragement along the way. The link to that will be down in the description below. And I also um, check out my website as well. There is a mailing list where I will send updates and other tidbits of information that I think will be helpful and interesting as well. So thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next video. Peace.